Carl Smith completed his undergraduate studies at Wayne State University in Detroit. He has a Master's of Art in Political Science with a specialization in International Relations from Northeastern University and a Master's of Art in ESL from Simmons College in Boston. In his time at Montgomery College, he has participated in the Renaissance Scholars Program and as an instructor for the Cambridge Summer Seminar for Honors Students at University of Cambridge. In addition, he has developed an Honors Learning Community Dyad in American History. He is currently co-chair of the Social Sciences Department at the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. Hi. Okay. Um, I just want to say, first of all, to the incoming uh, s fellows, probably what you have in mind for your project now will not be in your head when you get to this point. I assure you, it, mine changed four or five times. Uh, and I remember going down to the Smithsonian the first time, thinking, okay, I teach history, let's go to the History Museum and I'll tie in the exhibit X or exhibit Y. Uh, I got down there and just saw so many other things that could work in my class. And I have to say, as a, for, for history, I don't know if I can adjust this up a little bit, there we go. Uh, for history, I feel like it was a fast track connection. Unlike math, unlike some other things, I could see that connection happening very easily, very quickly, uh, about race and this theme of uh, are we in a post-racial America yet. So uh, I titled my presentation, Are We There Yet? Uh, the Long and Twisted Highway of American Racial History from Slavery to President Obama. And I, th I think about that, whoa. Hello? I think about that because uh, when I saw post-racial America, that's what resonated with me. That's what I've been hearing a lot. And if you pay attention to the public square, so to speak, you hear a lot about, oh, we're in a post-racial America now. And I remember that being said in and around the time of the inauguration in January 2009. So I, I, that's where I was sticking with. And by the way, anyone care to, to date this picture of the uh, Smithsonian Castle? <laughs> Very good, 1867. Very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is from the Smithsonian page. And, I, and that's one thing I, I, I think about with history is uh, this will sound very strange, and you may recommend various therapists when I say this. But I really feel that sometimes history can seep up through your feet into your, to your head, to your heart. And I see this picture, and I'm thinking, okay, this is 1867. This is the Smithsonian Castle. This is how Abraham Lincoln saw this. If he was walking around in the mall, you know, this is what he saw, just like this. So uh, that's pretty amazing. So that's where I, where I started uh, with this. Let's see if this works. Okay. So um, where I'm beginning with some some questions uh, of how do you explore and explain. 17th and 18th century concept of race. Race is the, the main event of early American history. It's not a sideshow. It's not something that you can corral off to the, corral off to the side like with African American history and say, okay, that's African American history, so now we study the African Americans. Uh, but really, if you think about the history of the United States, where the capital was, uh, where the uh, economic systems were tied up, uh, the Constitution, Article II, Slavery is, is, is interwoven without that, and the issues of race are interwoven in that. Uh, so I, it also is a difficulty to think about how to get people from the 21st century to think about these ancient concepts of race. And this Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship theme, how does it tie into the central concept of a History 201, in my case, American History Survey Class, History 201, and how to use the Smithsonian as a tool uh, or in other words, how do you go from the picture on the left to the picture on the right? And that's a really tough journey for our students. You know, if you think about it, if you have a 20-year-old student, they were in elementary or middle school when 9-11 happened, right? Uh, to me, 9-11 was yesterday. But to them, it, this, this, this really gives a perspective to things. So you really have to really dig really far back for people to, to see this sort of thing. 
Uh, and that's what I say here is that, you know, if you think about our students, um, for, a, for a lot of them, it's, uh, the challenge has been to try to make a, this early American history topic material more, more interesting, more relevant to them. History 202, the 20th century, which focuses on 20th century American histories, is so much easier. You know, you turn on the History Channel, and here's yet another video of World War II aerial bombings, and you know, all the students have that kind of familiarity. They get it through osmosis. But the colonial era stuff is, is very distant for them. And so the challenges in prior classes have been, well, the students say, why should I care? Now this is ancient stuff. Um, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. There you go. Uh, exploring alternatives is, and is a, can we learn from these mistakes of our past? And sometimes you're, you're trying to think about those early things and what led to the Civil War and trying to get students to wrap their head around that. And also to think about the causes of things. Why did this stuff happen? Didn't have to hap did it have to happen this way? What were the causes? What were the effects? And finally, here's the one I think that's most important, is appreciating different perspectives. I, I often tell students, you think about history like a car crash. And the car crash happens. There's two cars involved. And how would you feel if the official there, if it was a state trooper or county policeman, walked up to one of the two drivers took the testimony of what happened, wrote it all down, and then walked away. And you were the driver of the second car. And the, the, the state trooper never even came and talked to you and asked what happened and what, would, what did you see and why didn't, did he stop and all the rest of that. So often history is written that way. They get the perspective of one person or one group and the other groups are sitting around thinking, well, wait a minute, <laughs> we were there too. Uh, and it's important to get those different perspectives. Uh, and I think it's even more important nowadays, uh, in our current political climate, we can't even agree on the facts. <laughs> you know, 20% of the people think that the President of the United States is a secret Muslim, uh, or is, they're not sure of his religion, they think he's Muslim, things like that. So uh, we got a ways to go, and I think it's, um, it's important to appreciate these different perspectives rather than to dismiss them. So that's something that I want my students to do, and I thought through this project it might be easier for them to do that. So here's what I came up with. Um, first of all, I wanted to get the students into the mindset of, the, of what a race-based society would look like. And I've had great help with that. When I, when I came across this book called Defending Slavery, and it's a collection of first-person essays, reports, congressional testimony uh, from men, it's pretty much all men, uh, who supported the slavery system and talked about why there's a difference between the races and compared American democracy to ancient Rome and said, well, you know, this, every vast civilization had slaves, so maybe the American system should too. Uh, so this helped the students get into the, the mindset, and it was funny to see the reactions to this. Students wrote journals responding to this reading, and usually the response went something like, eww, what's wrong with those guys? Um, and we got a chance to talk about that, and you know, the, 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 how this is often the rationale for the economic system. Then, after visiting the museums, I had the idea of, okay, now that you've seen what a race-based society, or the origins of a race-based society, let's talk about now what more contemporary ideas of race, or what some of those alternative voices have on race. And I think the easy thing to do would have been to say, okay, it's a history class, go to the history museum. But thanks to my exposure to all these different exhibits, I sent students to the National Museum of American Indian, the Natural History Museum, because they had that exhibit on the origin of, the, of humanity. Remember that one, the evolution one? Well, that was so cool. Uh, and uh, what was the other? Oh, the uh, Portrait Gallery. 
and the American Art Museum. Because all of those things had different exhibits that I saw through my visits that tied into contemporary ideas or alternative views of what is race. Uh, and in some cases, talking about the, the history of slavery. Um, a lot of, I let the students choose which one they wanted to go to. I didn't go with them. I gave them the choice, explained where they had to go, what they had to do. Uh, and uh, I let them choose because I, I thought it would work better with the, the diversity of interest I have in the class. So a lot of them went to the American Indian. A lot of them went to the, uh, the Museum of, of Natural History. Uh, which is that, that great exhibit. We didn't get a chance to see it, but one of the things m all my students talked about was the thing where they could, the computer simulation, where you go up and you can see what, you take a picture or image of yourself and you can see what you look like as a, um, as a Neanderthal or all these other different things and they, they just love that. And some of them got jealous because some of them went when there was a big line and they couldn't do it because uh, they couldn't get to the computer terminal, and, but others did do it, and they started talking to each other, and the other one said, man, I didn't get a chance to do that, I'm going back, you know, which is, is a pretty cool thing to hear. Uh, so that was part two. Part three uh, is where I asked students to write or uh, respond, again, another essay, uh, where they had to respond to the question, are we there yet? Does the post-racial society exist, and how far if anywhere uh, have we gone? And I'm going to try to, let me see here. Oops. Okay. I have a couple of examples of students writing here. If I can minimize this. Uh, there we go. And we don't have time to read the whole thing, uh, but this is just a couple of examples of the student's response uh, to this question of are we there yet. And again, they're, this is after doing the readings from the 17th and 18th century writers, after going to the museum. Uh, this is just a couple, just a couple of them uh, that students said. And Again, I'd love to show you, give you time to read the whole thing, but maybe if everybody can just look at the first sentence or two, get an idea of where the student is going with this. And here's another one. Another one down here. And they basically were uh, posting these in a message board. Uh, so there was some response to go back and forth. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to really engage in more of a follow-up or debriefing on what people said, but this is what we ended up with. My final slide here is my lesson learned uh, I think I could have done a better job of implementing the technology. Uh, that's a minor point. But I think the second point is something that came uh, from one of my fellow fellows. Uh, and it picks, uh, picks up on what Takika was saying, is, is a chance to interact and learn from one another. That was a great thing. And uh, one of the things I learned was uh, maybe it's important to define what a post-racial society was. Somebody in the group said that, I think it was Sarah, that we should think about what, what a post-racial society will look like as much as defining the end of the journey. And I think the next time I'm going to do this, and definitely there's going to be a next time, so there's going to be a herd of Montgomery College history students down at the museum in the near future. <laughs> um, they're going to be looking at whether, you know, are we there yet? And what will it look like when we get there? 
uh, and maybe a better chance for the students to reflect on their own concept of, of race. But I would say in the end, it was a very unifying theme. It, it really was good for putting the class together. Otherwise, American history can just be this, sick, this uh, series of events uh, that are not unified. And this gave it some unification and also gave us, a, right in the middle, we had this trip to this wonderful facility known as the Smithsonian. And it just uh, really worked for the students as a way to see what race is about. So that's it. Sorry for going too long. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting. What I was l using was these, these essays, or kind of like a journal, where there was the first one responding to the readings in the book, the second one responding to the museum, and the third one responding to the question. So maybe, I'd hate to try to squeeze a fourth one in there, but maybe something, some kind of either in-class exercise or some small writing exercise to ask them sort of to think about, well, where, where do you stand on these issues of race and, and something like that. I'm big into writing, um, so I attended far too many writing across the discipline workshops. <laughs> and never too many. Never too many. <laughs> so, but, so I'm in, big into that as a way for students to reflect on, on what they're learning. Uh, but I suppose it could be an in-class exercise of some sort. 